Hey. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am finally beginning to wrap up this series of little clips. Uh, I'm sorry that it's taken so long to get these up. I got back to the States about a week and a half ago, and uh, I've been trying to get some other things worked out before wrapping up this playlist. So I thought enough is enough. Today I just finished uploading all the remaining videos from Japan, and now I'm going to film this one. This is uh, my non-religious wrap-up of the trip. And uh, in probably probably two weeks from now, I'll finally get the very last video, the actual message that I've been working up to this entire time. Sorry about the wait, that is not my intention. But uh, like I said, I need, I need a few things to happen in a certain order, so um, that video is just going to have to wait for a couple of weeks. So... Again, to wrap up, in case it wasn't perfectly obvious, the trip was an absolute dream. It was everything I wanted it to be, and it has been so many years in the making, and I'm so glad for that. Give or take, I spent about a third of my time being a typical tourist. I spent about a third of my time doing things specific to learning the language and speaking to as many people uh, for as long as possible. And then about a third of the trip, I would say, was, was either random exploring or something that I would consider a pilgrimage or part of a pilgrimage. Uh, there's some overlap between what is tourism and what is a pilgrimage. Sometimes it was easy enough to draw that line. But, you know, it was just... It was, it was great to see that side of, of humanity, you know, that, that different culture, so unique from our own. And uh, we wandered down dark alleys way too often. I think it's funny that we just kind of wandered into that situation so many times. And it was absolutely hilarious to know that I, that I do not fit into an extra large jacket in Japan anywhere. My major goal was to buy a, a black jacket because mine is is very threadbare and i wanted to get one in japan no absolutely not and although i have the waist of a japanese man apparently uh just the shoulders and arms thing just did not work and uh it would have taken too long to have them make one completely from scratch for me and i would i could do that here in the states anyway so although that was a bit of a disappointment that continued to amuse me that all of the clothing for sale was in no way workable for me. But if you're watching this video to learn something, uh, I have two lessons that I can teach today. Again, without the, the religious part, that's, that's coming up in the next video. My two non-religious lessons today are as follows. One, if, in fact, you are learning a language and you're trying to do the immersion thing of going to a language where that's the native tongue, um, please, please believe me when I say, just talk to people. Don't worry about how awkward or, or um, unexpected you might seem. You're going to throw a few people off. There are some people that just do not have the patience to talk to foreigners. They are the minority. They're the minority in every single culture. All right, it was true for me in the Dominican Republic, it was true in Africa, it was true in France, and it was true in Japan. Some people didn't want to deal with me. However, most people, when they realized that I was clearly not fluent in the language, but when I knew more than, hello, goodbye, I'm sorry, and where is the bathroom? Once they knew that I could actually put a sentence together, in addition to those um, just little lines that tourists know, then they warmed up to me, and they were able to work with me, and I learned so much, and just gained so much confidence in speaking the language because of those people. So, if you are trying to learn a new language, and if you're trying to do the, the immersion-style learning, do not be afraid to talk to people. Four out of five people will be delighted to talk back with you. And the other fifth, well, if they're not interested, they'll probably let you down pretty easy. And you can move on without too much fuss. It is definitely worth the risk. 
The second lesson I have, if you're trying to get in to see a new culture, uh, the lesson I can offer is from my very, very first day. I didn't really have a video of this. The guys got me from the subway, but they had to go to a different event and they didn't have a ticket for me. So I got into Japan at dinner time and I had no one to be with that first night. They gave me the key to the room. They said, see you in four hours. Sorry about that. And I wandered around and I was looking for a place to eat. Now I could have gone into um, a Japanese style franchise. You know, it was busy, it was brightly lit, it looked clean and well upkept. But I actually went back to the very first restaurant I saw and it was so scary looking because it wasn't even on street level, you had to go down the stairs and there were windows. So all the people in the restaurant like looked up and stared at me when I passed by the first time and it, it kind of seemed like a strange place. But in the end, I went back and I went into that place because I knew that if I went into one of the busier, more cosmopolitan places, they'd serve me my food, ignore me, and I'd be so mousy I wouldn't try to speak the language because it was my first night in Japan. I'd eat my food and then leave and learn nothing. Instead, I went into that more humble place called Heaven's Kitchen, actually, and I had a blast because... It was so down to earth and it was so casual. They actually were excited to see me. And the, uh, the owner, uh, Zono, uh, yeah, Zono had a, I wasn't thinking like Zono or no Zo. Anyway, he was so thrilled to have someone he could practice his English with. And he helped me out with my Japanese. And I sat there and drank sake had a very bizarre meal. I did not order wisely the first time. Uh, and just watched ridiculous Japanese game shows while picking as many Japanese words with my ear as possible. And it was the best first night I could have possibly asked for. So once again, the lesson there is don't be afraid to jump in to the places that may not seem as friendly at first, but have character. Because... Those are the places you will meet more real people. Oh, okay, yes, you will find real people anywhere. But in those places, the real people will actually talk to you. They will acknowledge your existence and actually kind of welcome you a little bit into their culture. You will not get that in every restaurant you go to or every bar or every whatever. But if you see those down-to-earth places the places off the beaten path. They aren't barriers against you. <laughs> Even if it appears that they're like that. So, the next time you're in that situation, I hope that you can muster up the courage to take, uh, take the first steps toward that place. And hopefully something good and, uh, and joyful and educational comes of it. So, that's what I have to teach for now. Uh, keep an eye out for two weeks, and I'll wrap this thing up then. Thanks a lot.